What's up guys? I uh, just wanted to make this video almost kind of like one of those little day in the life videos. Uh, what I do is real estate photography and sometimes uh, the realtors will request drone footage or not footage, but pictures. So I figured I would just kind of bring you through like a normal shoot, just go through like the, the type of angles that I look for, um, best practices. So we just pulled up to a property and I'm actually gonna take off just right from my car here. And since I just got this car, I actually ordered a little landing pad because I like to take off from the sunroof, but I don't want to put it right on the paint of the car because that could scratch it. Got the drone out, got the propeller blades opened up. Now I just kind of put it on top, start up the remote. And what you realize, as soon as you want to take a picture of a house, Gonna be garbage day and there's gonna be garbage cans all over the place so there's a way to edit that out and approach edge of altitude zone thank you there's uh there's ways to edit that we're actually going to close this because we don't need that open all right so i have my screen recorder going right now let me just double check yep it's recording so we're gonna take off here Gotta be a little careful because there's trees right above me. So I'm not gonna go very high. Make sure I stay out of the way here. And it's gonna be this house right here. So, kind of the obvious shot that I start with is just directly in front of the house. So I'm gonna drop down a little bit just so that tree's not in the way. Maybe go in a little closer. You know, usually I do straight on, but something like this, where there's a bit of an obstacle, I might go off this side a little bit. And if you guys notice, the, the drone just took five pictures. So we have it on um, exposure bracketing. So basically what it's gonna do, uh, what it's gonna do is take five photos, and then in post-production, that's actually really loud, in post-production, we're gonna blend those all together. We're gonna blend those all together to create an HDR photo. So that's what you guys are seeing after every photo I take here. And just to kind of explain my, my work through right here, basically I do four photos kind of in like a stair pattern from the front of the house. So I'll do one straight on, Go up about 50 feet, up about 50 feet, up about 50 feet. So now I'm gonna go around, shoot it from an angle. Pretty much trying to get right on the corner here. Just make sure to show the whole property. I'm gonna back up a little bit to show a little bit more of the sky. But really the, the subject should be in the bottom of the frame, at least for the way we do the photos. Just because that kind of makes it the most obvious that that's the one that you're taking pictures of. Always makes me a little nervous doing the flights over the water. I'm gonna get from the back corner now. And I'm gonna go directly from the back of the house. We'll wait for that car to get out of frame. There we go. Directly from the back. Now we'll hit it from a 45 degree angle back here. Definitely want to show all that water and how close it is. So we're gonna back up a little bit. Background to the front, we did not do this corner yet. So this will be the last one from this height. That's actually a really nice shot. Right, now what we're gonna do, I almost, I forget this one more often than I'd like to admit. Um, so I have to go back and get it pretty often, but I'm not gonna forget it here. So we're gonna do the classic, just overhead shot, showing the whole property line. And then sometimes we'll draw like a red outline around the actual property. We got that one. Right, go back up a little bit. We're going to back up. And once I get to the lower altitudes, I put it back into normal mode. I had flipped it to sport just so I can get from corner to corner a little bit more quickly. Uh, but once I get a little lower, I just I want those proximity sensors on um, for things behind me and underneath me and over me. I think that's about 150 feet here. I do want to include the water line for these. So I have the house a little bit higher than I normally would. Now 
Now we're gonna drop down to about 100 feet. And this one's gonna be pretty close up. I don't need to include the water line on this one. And what I'm gonna do, lower that a little bit, because I wanna get as much of the pool as possible, but I also want to include the skyline. So sometimes on houses like this, if there's a tree blocking, swing around like this a little bit. I actually want to make sure I see where I'm going. Don't like flying sideways if I can avoid it. Alright, and yeah, this is a good one because I just want to include kind of that whole pool from this low perspective. And if I can grab the canal like this, that's perfect. So now we're going to fly back and I should be able to even land here. It's going to be a little tricky. Does not want to. There we go. Right, so, what we're going to do. No, don't fly away. We're going to go down really. Oh. All right, that worked out. I didn't expect it to go to auto landing like that. But that's pretty much it. Uh, that's what I want to show you guys. It's pretty simple. We have like the same angles that we'll get for pretty much every house. But this is why I love having the moonroof in the car because I did all that and I didn't have to leave it all. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.